So, I still haven't beaten Breath of the Wild. Um, <laughs> after owning this game for two years, I still haven't beaten Ganon. I actually just recently beat the last four of the Divine Beasts. I just barely, like right before I recorded this video, completed the last of 120 shrines and got the coveted Tunic of the Wild. I've completed all the main story stuff, but I'm in no rush to go to the castle and actually beat the game. So let me make another video about this game and tell you why. Despite Breath of the Wild being an open world game, it doesn't have your conventional tropes of open world design. Most open world games litter your map with trinkets, doodads, and fun things to do. Breath of the Wild does not do this, um, does quite the opposite actually. Breath of the Wild begins with a blank map, and it's up to you as a player to discover the world on your own. There is minimal hand-holding in this game, and I absolutely adore it. It's, it's incredible. Rather than, you know, offering the player fun, the player gets to make their own fun. The world of Hyrule becomes your playground. It's like, <laughs> it's like Nintendo dropped Link in a sandbox, gave him some tools and told him, we're not gonna be back for like 100 plus hours, so. Woo! <laughs> and even though I've had this game for, you know, more than two years now, and I've actually beaten other games in the meantime, I have zero desire to leave this sandbox. There is just so much to do. I love checking the hero's journey tracker and seeing where I haven't been on the map and just going to those locations. By doing this, I have found some of the most beautiful and just, just the nicest places. And even though I may not find a shrine or some, you know, cool loot, it is just such a treat to explore new places in this beautiful world. And I mentioned this in my nature video, but I'll delve into it some more. It's just a blast to exist in this world and see new and beautiful sights. I often find myself, you know, taking screenshots in moments like these. <laughs> and, oh gosh, um, I even go back from time to time to look over my screenshots before I go to bed at night. Uh, my wife loves it so much. <laughs> I love camping in this game too. It's just so satisfying to find dope locations and just set up camp and chill. I'll find myself going under trees, debris, cliff sides, and I'll just hang out in the surrounding area for a while. You know, maybe I'm role playing a bit too much, but I love being a little survivor boy in this game. You know, from foraging to hunting, dying a lot. It's just a cathartic blast. And oh my goodness, shield surfing in this game is actually way too sick. I never thought shredding in a Zelda game would actually be so much fun. I guess that mini game in Twilight Princess is really fun too. As I play and find places to shield surf, I'll mark locations on my map so I can come back later and Shred some more gnar later, you know what I mean, dude. And even though I still have like 2,758 Korok seeds I still need to collect, and lots of armor to upgrade, and a myriad of side quests that are still on my log, I am more than just content to keep, you know, doing my thing. You know, speaking of doing my thing, let's go back to those two words I mentioned earlier goof off. This phrase is actually what keeps me coming back to Breath of the Wild. And I don't mean goof off in the ooh, wacky blah, 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 sense, you know? I, uh, <laughs> That was the worst. Although you can do some pretty wacky stuff in this game. <laughs> oh man, that's cute. I just love that this game allows you to simply live and exist in this world. You know, through its totally interactive design, it gives you so many options to experiment, play, and express yourself. And because of this freedom and interactivity, I have absolutely fallen in love with this world. And you know, rather than just being a tourist, I actually feel like I live in this world. And because I have lived in this world, I, I feel like I belong to it. 
And I... I really don't want to leave it. But, you know, with this said, I know I will eventually beat the game. But I really don't want to. I'm dreading the day that I beat this game because I feel like I'll be saying goodbye to a world that I've grown to love so much. And of course, you know, I can start a new game and re-enter the world, but this first playthrough has been so special to me. It's been such a unique gaming experience that I don't think I'll be able to replicate ever again. It's become my Hyrule. You know, all the campouts, all the beautiful sights, all of the wacky things that I've done, all of the memories. It will be the end of a beautiful journey in a world that I have not only fallen in love with, but a world that I feel like I actually lived in through this game's wondrous act interactivity. It, it'll definitely be bittersweet. Thank you, Breath of the Wild, for providing me so many fun memories. Hey, folks. Um, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Um, I love this game. It's always a pleasure to talk about Breath of the Wild. And um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Ignacio. Um, he posted a really nice comment on my Nature and Video Games video, and he kind of inspired me to make this other video about Breath of the Wild, so thank you so much, man. Um, you know, subscribe, like, comment. If you want to, you know, see more of this kind of stuff, um, I will be making more video essays, and I might delve into some gameplay videos too. I'm still trying to feel, feel it out, but um, thank you guys, yeah. Um, subscribe for more opinions and thoughts slowly and poorly said by me. I'm very, very great at narrating, okay? <laughs>